Steve, how did you get into this music? Like, how'd you get into hardcore? So what happened was, um, I went to a private school in Costa Mesa called St. John the Baptist. And there I met a guy named Sterling Wilson. Okay, Sterling and I became friends. Sterling actually ended up playing bass for um, No Current Answer. He played in Reason to Believe. Um, and then was part of the scene for a while, uh, doing different things, but kind of got out of hardcore, it seemed like. I lost you know, contact with him uh, in the 90s, I think. And um, But he was really into punk. And he would, at school, like after, after elementary school, I went to a private school. We lost each other. And then I came back and went to Costa Mesa High. He was there. He was a year older than I was. And um, I knew nobody. And when I saw him, I was like, hey, so we kind of connected. And he played music for me. And I was like, man, this is, this is different. This is cool. And back then, I was like into Depeche Mode and like kind of, which I still love. Um, but it was just so different, you know. And he played me like Agnostic Front. And he played me the Pro Max. And I was like, man, this is this is awesome. Like, this is something totally different. And, uh, you know, and I really got into it. And then he played bass and he lived down the street from me. And I remember one day going over and he was like, um, I was really getting into it. He was making me tapes and stuff. And, um, I wanted to learn how to play bass. So he gave me an acoustic guitar that had like four strings on it. And he showed me like a basic, like one, two, three, four on the frets. And he has just do this every day. Just watch TV. Don't worry about what you're playing. Just do this. And you'll eventually be able to work it up and down the neck. And um, I did that for like, you know, God, I don't know, like six months before I bought a bass. But like, I fell in love with that. I, I, I blame him for <laughs> him and a guy named Eric Wood, who played in a band called Pillsbury Hardcore and PHC uh, for me wanting to play bass. And actually, I just uh, reconnected with Eric recently, which was kind of cool um on instagram but um yeah so and it was him he took me to my first show which was the exploited um blast which i love till still to this day um uh who else played i want to say vd played um god who else i don't remember who else but it was a fender's ballroom up in long beach and i was like blown away like i i completely blown away what year then, was um, that? So, what what year would you God, I wanna I wasn't driving yet, so it had to have been like eighty five maybe. Maybe eighty five somewhere around there. And what was it like being and, a, um, I'm saying as a guy that's not driving, I mean you're you're a young kid. I mean and I know that you have kids yeah. now. Like what yeah what what was that like being in that energy, being in that at at the time? It was great. It was it it, it was scary. Like it was totally scary because like I think the SOS guys ran security. So those guys were super intimidating. And me being this kid from Orange County, it was a different vibe. It was Long Beach. And I was like, what am I doing here? At the time, my parents didn't know I was there. And um, it was just different, man. But it was exciting. And, and it was like something different. And the music was just crazy. And I, I don't know. It, was, it really changed my life. And then um, really got into music. Like, I was always into music. Like, my sister was four years older than I was. So she was really into music and still is and still part of like a different scene, but um, she would always turn me on to new music and it was more like new wave stuff or whatever. And then once I found hardcore, it was my way to kind of branch out and like, you know, into punk rock. Um, and then Sterling graduated and his neighbor was, went to Mesa and he was my age. So we started a band and covers and you know we were horrible i didn't know what i was doing i bought my bass and i bought a distortion pedal with it because eric from phc played with distortion i was like well i gotta play with distortion and um i just terrified like just just my neighbors hated me and like you know so we were practicing in this kid's garage and it was fun but then eventually it stopped because we were just too loud so we had to go to this place in uh anaheim called Stompbox. i don't know if you remember that yeah it was right next to a place called band west yeah. Stompbox was like the cheap version of it yeah and um because downer practiced so, at bam west right like didn't you right right we okay. practiced we had a lock out there because i was yeah but um in between all that sterling got me also a job at where he worked and that's how i met john bruce and rick reno because sterling worked with john and rick so ingram micro opened up more no it was a place called best products in santa Ana, like right off of um Dyer, Seagrestrom, and Bristol. This is the original like best products. Product. Like, not Best Buy, yeah, but like, best. with the big best. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So we all worked there. And then that's how I met John. And John was in Half Off. This was before Haywire. And um, and then I was doing that band, which never did anything. It was like my first real band. Kind of got a deal, but we never played any shows. And we would practice at Stompbox. And then the guys in Half Off would come see us. And like, hey, you guys sound good or whatever. You know, give us encouragement or whatever. And then um, God, after that, I want to say... I think Sterling graduated, went to OCC, and I would leave OCC at lunch and go to, or leave Costa Mesa High and walk across the street and go to OCC. And then I met the Goodsons. And the Goodsons were like the key to like hardcore. They knew everybody. So I started hanging out with them and they would introduce me and I met like Dan and I met like everybody. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and then from then they were always going to shows. So I always knew where the shows were. Are. And we would either go with them or we'd show up and, and it was just, I just fell into that community and that scene and it was just cool. It was, a, it was a great vibe. Everyone got along. Everybody knew each other. It was never, I never really remember ever having a bad time or, you know what I mean? Like it was just fun and we got in trouble and did some crazy stuff, but it was just a fun time. But it all started with Sterling Wilson, AKA mm -hmm. Chud. Now. Yeah. And they, and, and called Chud as I, as I've heard the story, because I think John Bruce had a new pet or something, a cat or a dog, and Sterling's and Sterling and Sterling said you should call that animal Chud, and then John Bruce shot back, we should call you Chud, and then I think that's how that I think. But <laughs> when I should I ever get the pleasure I, of interviewing that version? Oh well, then <laughs> what version do you know? I want I want it all. I, the only thing I heard was, was so he's staying out with a, like a, a crew of guys from Tustin. I didn't know those guys, but apparently they used to go marching around in the sewers, like to get places. And back then, I don't know what it was. And so Chud had come out. That movie had come out. So obviously, cannibal yeah, humanistic really underground dwellers. I mean, the Bruce story might have been true too. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. I actually ran into him about four or five years ago at IKEA down the street from my house, and I didn't even recognize him. He's like. Steve? And I was like, what? And I was like, oh my God. Like, it was amazing to see him. I hadn't seen him in years. You know what I mean? And the weirdest places of all the women was, was Ikea. So. <laughs> so then, was Freebase your first, like, real band yeah. kind of thing? Now, were you in PHC? Yeah, yeah, that was the... Or did you just like PHC? No, 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 no. No, I absolutely... When I heard those two... Three bands that really stood out to me um, that made a real big impression on me. One was PHC, um, Eric's bass playing on that. And to this day, I don't think Eric plays much anymore. He does more like experimental stuff. But his bass playing is just like, to me, is one of the best bass players ever, like hands down. Like he does stuff that's just incredible. So that really was a big part. Another band was, a, um, which I still love, is a band called Infest. Okay. And I think they were from up in like Santa Barbara. And they still um, play. The speed they and just, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. And, and just the ferociousness and just the speed of what they did was like, like it, it, that was it for me. And then another band called Blast yeah. from Santa Cruz and just their heaviness at the time and just what they were doing. Even to this day, like the reissue stuff is still just as good. Like it's, I don't know, that stuff is just fantastic. But that stuff really, and of course everything else, like, you know, no for an answer and hard stance and all the Orange County stuff was great too. But those are the things to this day that really kind of I still listen to in heavy rotation. I still listen to the other stuff that's on my playlist, but that's the stuff that really sticks with me. You know, um, but um, I got away from your question. I'm oh no, sorry. no, no. Um, well, how did Freebase? How did Freebase okay. free form with you and John? So that was out of John. That was John. John, I think Awar had just broken up. And John and I had been friends. John and I are still friends. I just saw John, like, two weeks ago. He came down. I talked to him, like, once a week. He comes down from Fresno. He's like, yeah, so... Um, I need to interview him. They had broken up, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I talked about that, and he was, he was like, yeah, yeah. Um, sounds like fun. But um, he... He had hit me up, because we had been working together, and he, they had broken up, and he wasn't sure what he wanted to do, but he really liked the electronic kind of side of doing, like... There was a band at the time called Dose, um, which was like a two bass player kind of band thing. And he liked that idea and then wanted to incorporate and like a sequencer and um, and like a keyboard. And we can just do this thing. It's two bass players distorted. He'll be like the lead bass player. I would do like kind of a rhythm thing. Um, and we program drums and just kind of write the songs. 
So he had written all the initial songs. Uh, I didn't even know how to use any of the sequencing or programming stuff at that time. So I came into it. We practiced in the garage a couple of times. And they did, did that. And that was fun. That was really fun. It was different, you know, and it wasn't like hardcore. It was just kind of is what it was, you know what I mean? Um, and super fun. And um, so like I said, just different. I think now has a big impact on like when I write. Like the electronic stuff that I do write or try and incorporate into what I do comes a lot from that and learning that, the fun of learning that process. 